Good morning, good morning, Dr. Gary here on Dr. Gary on the Road. We are dental practice brokers <coughs> selling dental practices nationwide. So today's topic is going to be, what does it take for a seller of a dental practice to wake up and realize it's time to retire. We're going to talk about that, some different instances. So anyway, um, the our dental practice brokerage has now been active for 12 years now. We have 10 employees. We're involved in 26 states. And to reach us, our phone number is 201-663-0935. Our website is dentalpracticeguide.com. So please give us a call. We can chat. We'd love to hear from you. And we can talk about it. The information you're about to hear is for entertainment purposes only. It is not business or legal advice. Now to reach us, it's 201-663-0935. And the website is dentalpracticeguide.com. So please give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. If you want to chat one day and you have certain questions, buyer or seller, or you're a seller, like an evaluation, a free evaluation of your office, please call us. We're available from 7.30 a.m. to 9.30 p.m. every single day except Christmas and Easter, East Coast time. So just call us. If you are thinking about selling to a DSO, we work with them all the time. We refer out to various different companies, uh, various different DSOs. We're independent. We pick and choose who we think is best for you. We get this, They pay our commission. But it's the same commission no matter who we choose. So we want the best for you. Secondly, uh, certain instances we can get your legal fees reimbursed upon successful closing based on certain criteria. So call us on this. We can talk about it. Anyway... You know, when it comes to retirement, what, what does it really take? What jolts a dentist to get motivated to sell his dental office? Basically shocks him into uh, reality. Well, we found certain rules never seem to change no matter where in the country it, it is. And I've learned that if a dentist goes to two funerals in six months it's a major wake up it is it just shakes the dentist uh, foundation it's time to retire now the, or sell the practice that is it doesn't mean they have to stop working it's just that of what I've found the dentist wants out as far as the liability the responsibility the uh, and cash out of his practice. Don't forget, you're cashing out and you're protecting your principal. I realize that you're going to think, well, I'll just work another year or another year and a half. I'll make the same money back. Yeah, it doesn't work that way when you're over age 50. It's disability. It's look at the changes we've been through since 2019. Who would ever predict pandemic, superinflation, and a war in the Ukraine. Nobody could predict that back in 19. Nobody. So that could have radically changed your practice. And then, you know, all of a sudden, you have to sell under pressure. You never want to sell your dental practice under stress and under pressure. You always want to be in the position of you're not under the gun. But I found, and this has happened, a couple, well, I'm doing this 12 years, so this has happened a few times two funerals of dental friends, their, you know, their colleagues in six months rattles the entire, the average dentist and gets them to um, just sell. And I hope that doesn't happen to you. You don't want to wait till two funerals. I often feel you should be getting out before you're ready to get out. Your accountants will never tell you to get out. They'll just tell you to stay the course. But I gotta tell you, 
I'm in the business and I see what happens. Selling a dental practice under pressure is challenging. You're not going to get what you want because you're trying to get it into a time period or a certain dollar amount. It's, it's challenging. It's still a seller's market, certainly. But do you want a vibrant practice that's healthy? Remember, you don't want declining revenues in your practice because declining revenues are, they banks, look they frown upon that. Buyers frown upon that. They say the practice is sinking. You don't want to be in that position of declining revenues. You want revenues that are robust, at least maintain level to level, year to year. It's, uh, you know, relatively the same. But getting back to this, the shock value of somebody passing away, and I've seen this, it just devastates you, and you want to get out. That is if you are of retirement age. Generally, you know, that happens. And if you're not at the perfect retirement age, maybe, um, you know, you do want to get out. You want to protect your principal, and you want to take another job, maintain uh, your income by working elsewhere. I mean, it can happen. You protected your principal, and now you're, uh, you've taken that, you've invested that, and now you're just making uh, as an employee. Of course, you lose some of the benefits and so forth, but you protected the principal. But that is something we've learned. This two funerals in six months, it seems to do it. Great talking to you.